So tell me how you got involved with uh, Art of Anarchy. Well, initially through association, of course, with Bumblefoot, we had the band uh, Sons of Apollo together. Correct. And when Sons of Apollo were first, when we first were hitting the road, it was pretty much when the whole Art of Anarchy debacle was, they, they, it was crumbling again. They, they had, they already had a, a situation where they dealt with their first singer and, and basically didn't want to continue and, and do what he promised at the beginning of the band's uh, inception. And then they had the same problem with the second singer, who, you know, uh, rather not name these guys because everybody knows who they are. Um, so the, the band was basically on its way out. It was, it was in turmoil already in 2018 when we were starting the Sons of Apollo tour. Uh, but I always loved the material. I always, I always loved the songs, and I always thought, man, this band absolutely deserves to get its say, it, its due. And it was unfortunate. And, and I, I kept telling Ron, what a great band, you know, great songs, etc. But it wasn't until the the, uh, the COVID lockdown where uh, we were forced off the road with uh, our own Sons of Apollo tour was canceled. Everybody was basically locked down, and I was just kind of catching up with Ron a couple months later, just saying, man, you know, what are we going to do? How long is it going to take? Blah, blah, blah. One thing led to another, and it kind of circled back to Art of Anarchy, and I said, what a pity that whole thing worked out the way it did, because, man, I, I would have loved to have heard my voice sounded like with that band, and, and <laughs> it kind of... It kind of it, it tickled his ear a little bit to the point where he spoke to the twins, he, the other the other two in the band that uh, that started this whole thing. I said, "Hey, should we send Jeff a couple songs that you know that they were working on and see what his voice sounds like on? Not not to not to say we're putting the band back together. We're going to keep going. Let's just see what this collaboration sounds like." Yeah. And it, it was it was innocent enough. It started there, and from there we we ended up writing almost two albums worth of material and. When it was time to actually say, what are we doing with this? Uh, we, we gathered the songs that made the most sense. And thematically, this was the uh, the return and the sound of the anarchy, so to speak, to let there be anarchy. And that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But that's the short of the long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good answer. Um, Thanks. <clears throat> you know, as you said, you're stepping into... Uh, a band that already has a history which is it's like unfortunate and strange but also unique in a lot of ways and yeah you know and it's not the first time you've stepped into um a vacant vocal spot and, and, and i guess i guess i'm kind of a i don't want to say an expert at it but i kind of know what to do in a, in a situation like this especially in terms of respecting the core of where it came from and you know it, it took me a minute to realize that uh, it, it was something to, once I realized that, you know Ron kind of filled me in on exactly what was the whole purpose the whole, the whole intent behind the band it was it, it made it just made sense it made sense on what my role would be and uh, and, and what I could do for the band and, and what should be done for the band just because you know like I said it's I've, I've always felt that uh, the band deserved a lot more than they got they, they were kind of short changed based on the circumstances and I'm not the kind of person who just comes in, you know, it's all, it's not only about me, it's not only about what it can do for me, it's all, it's about what, what it can do for us. So if I could be responsible in any way for them furthering the legacy of the band or, or taking it to the next level, all of the above, I, I'd love to be part of that. That's just who I am, it's what I'm about. Yeah, and I hopefully think that uh, you'd be able to keep the band rolling instead of just you know one album and done and one album and done uh you know and, and you know and that's that's the unfortunate that's the part that the, unfortunately they're dealing with now um you know if, if we had the success that journey has then it, you know moving <laughs> from one singer to the next and, and, and well yeah it, it sounds funny but it's true yeah, it because is. journey basically can they can write their own course based on the, the hits and then these sales and all that they can get 30 singers and be able to continue touring and people will go see it because of the brand journey but Art of Anarchy unfortunately is is kind of cursed in that three different albums three albums three different singers okay what is the crux of this band and what is the problem why doesn't this band resonate and unfortunately it started with the singers and so if I can be that one kind of cog that changes the, the, the wheel balance let's see you know let's see what we can do with it but uh, I told the guys I'm not doing this just to, to, to jump on your coattails. I'm not doing this to try and get something else for myself. 
I'm doing this because I, I love the music and I believe in what we can do together. And, and if we all have the same vision, let's go for it. 100%. As you said, the, the band never got, they, they never really got off the ground, you know, because they never got to. So, yeah. Um, and, and it's also neat that you get to continue being with Ron. And that was the main thing. I mean, let, let's not, uh, let, let's start from that in, in the sense that who knows where the future of, of Sons of Apollo is, is now with Mike going back to Dream Theater right. and Derek and Ron have this other thing with Dino Jalusic you know everybody's pretty much moved on in, to, to some degree I've always been doing my own thing anyway but the one thing I wanted to establish or, or keep established is my relationship with Ron as a musician as a, as a friend he's one of the one of the premier guitar players that that exists in the world today and one thing I pride myself is that I'm associated with a lot of the premier guitar players around the world <laughs> so i wanted to continue continue that that kind of uh working relationship and friendship that i have with ron and that's pretty much where it all started and, and obviously it, it, it doesn't hurt that art of Anarchy's music is really good so it was uh it was, yeah, i wouldn't be doing it if i didn't like the music i wouldn't be doing it just to, to be in a band with ron i would find another vehicle so it just kind of worked out in terms of i want to keep my association i want to keep working with the guy but I also love this band's music and what we what we did together. So it's a uh, it's a double whammy for me. Sure. And did did you guys ever um, get around to even writing for a third Sons of Apollo album? Um, no, we didn't get that far because uh, during the lockdown, we didn't know how long that was going to last. And and then all of a sudden, when it was time to play catch up, you know, especially somebody like Mike. We all have multiple situations we're in, but he's got multiple moving <laughs> situations. He, he was in, you know, from transatlantic to flying colors to Neil Morris. I mean, you just you can rattle him off. So Winery Dogs was another one that had, you know, he had a lot of catching up to do. Where Sons of Apollo was the one he committed 2020 for. We were supposed to do that for the entire year, yeah. and then he could jump back into the other things he already had planned for 21, 22, etc. So by the time we got around to 23. It, 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 it might seem obvious that where the course of where they were going was going to end up, you know, we, we didn't discuss it. Mike never spoke a word about get, heading back to the old mothership. Yeah. So we, we all knew it would have eventually happened someday, but we never knew when or if and how and all, the, all those details. And obviously with that being the main factor, I, I really don't know if Sons of Apollo and Dream Theater can coexist on the same, on the, on the same kind of plateau. Sure. And, and and you know I'm so I'm happy for him I'm happy for the fans. It's uh, the only one I'm I'm kind of bummed out about is Mangini, but he did have a nice run with them and he kept them. It, it would be kind of like if Steve Perry came back to Journey, if you know if that if that happened, the fans would be so exhilarated because that's the core of what they remember. Yeah. And obviously Arnell or myself or Steve or Jerry were able to kind of hold down the fort for that. And that's that's how I see what uh, Mangini was able to do for the band. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure when the announcement came, Mangini probably got a million phone calls. Yeah, I was one of them. I mean, <laughs> he's, you know, he's, I've known Mangini since uh, a very long time. He was actually supposed to be the drummer for the band Soul Circus that Neil, Sean, and I had. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, at that time, he just started teaching. He had a really high position teaching at Berkeley uh, Music School. Otherwise, he would have taken it. And I would have had my own my own running with the uh, with the man genie so he's <laughs> he's an incredible musician an incredible person he bounces off the walls he's just so fun to be around and uh, I, I know he's going to bounce back he's always got something up his sleeve so he, he's going to be alright so taking him back a bit uh, how, how did you end up getting involved with Ingve? well that was uh, kind of a Cinderella story in itself it was uh I just I, I was a big fan of Alcatraz and Steeler. I, I knew of Ingbe right when he was, you know, when he was starting to hit it. So um, being a big fan of his, I followed all the the news and the information that was going on in his life and career at the time. And it just so happened I was in a, a like a, a hard rock cover band in Colorado at the time. I, I just graduated high school the year before, and uh, the band wasn't working out, and I was planning on coming back home I call my mom hey I'm, I'm hopping on the Greyhound and I'm moving back home you got your your old son at the age of 18 years old coming back home to live with mom <laughs> it's, in, in normal circumstances yeah my, my band failed 
and I'm 40 years old and I'm my career is going nowhere, so I'm moving back home. But no, luckily I was still only 18. Um, I gave it a try somewhere else, and I, I thought I've, I got to come back to LA and, and try to, you know, kind of refocus my ideals of what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. But before I came home, it was I was just hanging out with some friends. We saw on MTV, uh, Mark Goodman was on there talking to MTV News about Ingbe Mountain left the band Alcatraz, and he's looking for a singer. He's in the studio recording his first solo album. And of course, at first, it was like, oh my God, that's awesome. Didn't even think for a second, me. I, the whole I, the whole time, I'm thinking, what a cool thing. Man, somebody's going to be lucky to be able to sing with him. But all my friends kept coaxing me. Dude, you got to send your tape to him. You got to send your tape. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Right. I was 16 years old when I sang this demo. He's not going to listen. He's not going to listen to it, much less consider me. Yeah. And they talked me into it. We sent the tape to L.A., and the rest is history. <laughs> 40 years later, here we are, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. Um, all, all essentially just from, from that one moment. So it's, it's cool well, stuff. Well, yeah, and, it, and it, it, obviously it, it was a, a situation where I doubted myself. Of course, I, I felt confident in who I was as a singer and what I could do, but I just thought I was 16 on this tape. He's looking for a real singer. He's looking for a pro, somebody who's been on the road, somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And on the contrary, he was happy to bring in somebody that we kind of put under his wing and, and show the ropes and, and learn together and grow together. Unfortunately, it wasn't a situation where we we're going to, quote unquote, grow together because between management and the label, it was only and all about Ingbe. Yeah. He's the marquee artist and we're basically the help. I mean, we, we were treated worse than, than most janitors in an elementary school. So, <laughs> it, you know, basically that's uh, one of the reasons why I, I moved on so quickly. We're... Normally, if the circumstances were a little more advantageous, I would have stayed with it and, and built more of a brand for myself before even thinking of moving forward. Yeah. Well, I, I think you've done well for yourself, sir. <laughs> well, you know, I, I did well enough in terms of uh, my, my tenacity. Was, it started with that. I had to learn what tenacity even meant and what to do with it. So it, it started from there, and uh, I've just been just trying to follow that course and that, Trying to do what I could. <laughs> what What's the, the rest of, well, I mean, I'm saying the rest, we're still at the beginning of the year, but what's the rest of 2024 looking like? <laughs> well, it, it just so happened that the uh, the album comes out when I'm celebrating 40 years in the business, so I'm kind of juggling. Uh, I've got between these amazing things I do with Jason Beeler from Saigon Kick, the Soto Beeler things that we keep building and growing on, the uh, kind of the comedy acoustic duo that we do. Between that and uh, hitting a, a bunch of markets that are requesting the JSS 40th anniversary legacy set, and then of course Art of Anarchy shows, I'm, I'm going to be bouncing around the world with with the three different entities. Fantastic. And of course, <laughs> ending it always ends up I, 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 the cherry on top at the end of the every year is Trans Siberian Orchestra. So yeah, it's a it's another packed year. Love it. Uh, I love it for you. I love it for the fans. Or you're currently living in L.A.? Still in L.A., yep. I seem to always keep coming back. I've tried living in different <laughs> parts of the world and the country. I always seem to get back to L.A., so... I understand. I'm from there originally, so... Okay. <clears throat> um, How long have you been in Vegas, then? Uh, well, here's the, here's the funny thing. So, I was in Vegas for about 20 years. Uh, oh! I just left in November, and now I'm in Pensacola, Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I saw the uh, the area code. I know that area code really well, so oh, yeah. I thought maybe you were still there. Yep. I'm, I'm still freshly freshly moved away from there. Gotcha. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's totally my second home. And uh, at this point, I mean, I live there longer than anywhere else, so. Well, you went from the dry heat back to the uh, the moist heat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and it feels good out here right now. Like, I'm, uh, uh, I work for an electric-ish company. And I say ish because... Yeah, they do traffic signals and stuff, but like what I oh, do okay. is kind of more construction based, like concrete and just all that kind of stuff and pipe and whatever. Damn. And um, that's why I, I didn't see, I didn't feel that my phone was vibrating, so I pulled it out. Like, oh, shit, I, I see a bunch of missed calls. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it feels good outside right now, but yeah, that, that humidity is already kind of kicking in. Oh yeah, I lived in I lived in Delray Beach, the east coast of Florida, for six months, and I'm like, nah, not for me. I'll, I'll take the dry heat any day. Yeah, it's it's a different animal for sure. Oh yeah. Um, 
So I, I asked um, about L.A. because uh, I like to ask, uh, at least anyone I talk to who's in the U.S., I like to ask this. So where are the best tacos? For me, uh, tacos, it's, uh, <laughs> in general, I, I have a few like local spots because I, I live in Thousand Oaks, which is actually Ventura County. Yep. And there's a few places I like here for when it comes to tacos. Uh, there's a place right next door to the, the Canyon Club, which is a place in Agora, close to where I live. There's a place there called La Plata, and that's one of my favorite places for tacos. Okay. They, they have the street taco mentality, and that's I, I prefer that over the overstuffed, way too much junk in there. Yeah, yeah. I like the simple with the grilled onions and you know a little a little um, what do you call the uh, the the salsa? And the, not damn, I can't think of it. The pico de pico de gallo. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a super hot guy, so I like this this, this traditional pico de gallo or uh, avocado cream with the uh, um, with either uh, chicken or uh, carne asada. Yep. Uh, that's 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 my jam. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, forty years. I'm sure it probably went by in a blink of an eye. Yes and no. I mean, it, it's it's the part that went by in the blink of an eye is the fact that I'm I'm 58 now, and at some point, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my friends, and even myself, you 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 start having to say you start having to to think about what the big picture is anymore. Yeah. Back to back, even up to a few years ago, the big picture was to be a household name, to be bigger than sliced bread, all, all the things that you strive for <laughs> as an artist. You don't, you're not in this business just to kind of get by. You're in this business to get as big as you can, to spread your music and spread your word around the world and, and, and get as much love as you can out there from people when it comes to your music and your career. But obviously, as you get older, you got to realize that Maybe that shelf life ain't what it's going to be or what you're expecting it to be. And then you find a different priority to put behind it. And at this point, it's, it's sustaining. It's taking all the things that I have done and, and celebrating them. You know, it's I'm not going to be, uh, unless I'm going to be like Tony Bennett, where people finally discover me at 60. <laughs> you know, this it, it, you, I always equate that to Tony Bennett because he was part of that whole scene. But it wasn't until the entire Rat Pack was dead and buried that he finally got his day yeah. and and he became the, the king of that, that world so I don't think that's going to happen to me there's way too many other <laughs> there's way too many uh, he was the only crooner left from that area that era there's way too many others that are still doing it that are older than me so I don't think I'm going to I'm going to domain hit that domain so I'm just going to sustain it and uh, and do what I can to just keep working and, and just keep doing my thing because I don't look at it at this stage of my life is finally making it big you know quote unquote yeah I, I, I will not be a household name by any stretch so I'm just going to take the name that I have and, and run with it as, as long and as far as people allow me to do it sure um it's <laughs> a good answer too do you, do you have any um any other projects outside of music not really, because, uh, I mean, I, 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 not jokingly, but I, I say it all the time kind of in, in jest that, you know, because it's the old cliche, oh, music is my life, music found me, I didn't find music, all, all those cliches, are, they're silly because you've heard them a million times, but they ring true, it's, it, it's not just something to say, it's, I have nothing else to do that I want to do, and anything that I would do outside of singing and writing and performing would have to certainly be surrounded by music, whether it's producing and writing for others or managing. I, I, I know only this world, and I haven't been in this world to now all of a sudden retire from it and, and get into something else or take up a hobby that, uh, you know, basketball, playing basketball is about the only other hobby I have. And as you get older and the knees start working less, <laughs> I, you know, music, I find anything that has to do with music a hobby as well as, uh, as, as well as a passion. Mm-hmm. Love it, man. <laughs> I really do. I love, I love your answers. Thanks, man. Um, so for the fans that have stuck around for 40 years, the, the newer fans and for the ones who have yet to even hear of Jeff Scott, Jeff Scott Soto, sorry. Um, what do you say to them? Well, the, the bottom line is I, the, the ones that have stuck with me I, 
the main thing I say to them is, God damn, we're old. Uh, <laughs> the, the ones kind of in between, you know, they, there's still a lot more in me, and you're going to get a lot more from me. And I, I try to keep it fresh. I try to I try not to stay. But I, I don't want to stay on any courses with the blinders. If you look at my discography, you'll see that I've tapped into so many diff- different things musically, from from new school to old school to, to everything in between and different genres. That, that's one of the things about being it's so highly influenced by Ben like Queen a band like Queen they there were no boundaries there were no walls and that allowed me to to really go for a lot of different things that you normally don't even think about going for because for the most part people they put on the blinders and they they stay in their own lane just for the sake of consistency I don't have a consistent bone in my body the only thing I love about music is the overall idea about music I don't want to stay in one lane I don't believe in one lane so the ones in the middle that you're going to get a lot more diversity from me. I'm not done by a long shot, and the ones who've yet to discover me, you know, I'm sorry, but get ready to open up your wallets because it's much of the same. I'm I'm going to do everything and anything I can to keep music and my creativity exciting and and, and keep you guys excited. <sighs> awesome, just awesome, Jeff. I want to thank you for your time. My pleasure, man. I appreciate you so much. And I really look forward to the new Art of Anarchy album. As I always do. I'll, I, I know that the first two were great. And, you know, I always hoped more for them. And unfortunately, as we talked about, you know, yeah. it just kept not happening. But, uh... So yeah. I take it you have not heard... Say that again? I take it you have not heard it yet? Not the new one, no. Uh, I'm sure, oh, it's, it's, sure. Probably, it's probably sitting in my, my inbox, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> definitely out, so I think you're going to dig it. It's, it's, uh, you're, you'll, hear, you'll hear elements of where it kind of came from. Obviously, you'll hear the elements of what Bumblefoot does as a writer and producer. And clearly, I've, I'm putting my spin on it. I'm not trying to be either Scott. I'm only trying to be the Jeff Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's, uh, that's but that, that was the funny part. I mean, I, I came up with that premise initially. I'm like, guys, you had two Scots. Let, let's, let's land the right one this yeah. time. The, the, the third Scott's the charm. <laughs> Scott Soto for the win here. Exactly. Coming in clutch. Right on. All right. Now, for real, Jeff, uh, I look forward to the album, and I, I hope I get to see you guys this year. Um, and right on, Marcus. Yeah, I, I, I hope the... Uh, but we get some, uh, we're, we're kind of waiting, it's kind of a waiting game right now, we're, we're hoping to see how and when the uh, the album resonates, because, you know, it, I'm sick of also doing tours just because you release an album, you can't, in these, this day and age, there's so much competition out there, you can't just drop an album and say, alright, let's book a tour, right. and then hope, hope people show up, and, you know, next thing you know, there's 40, 50 people a night, and that's just... That just kills the soul. <laughs> I, I want to do it where I know people are interested in the band. I don't. I don't want to go out there and force it. The, the rest of the guys don't want to force it. We, we want to make sure that people want to come and see this band, and then we're going to deliver. Fantastic, man. I hope. I hope everything comes together well. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you, Jeff. All right. Have a good one. Thank you, man.